We are six months into the Ukraine war and of course this is also a war that has been marked by a lot of diplomatic manoeuvring, discussions taking place around the world because these are issues that impact all of us wherever we are located. This week the focus is on Africa and we'll be discussing this in this episode of Mapping Fault Lines. We are joined by Prabir Prakash. Prabir, so two major visits that we've seen in Africa over the past week. One is Russian Minister Sergei Lavrov, of course, making a trip to certain key countries, including Ethiopia and Uganda. On the other hand, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, also making his own set of visits to countries such as Cameroon. So first, let's start with uh, Lavrov's visit, because that is the one that has gained a lot of attention. He's made uh, you know, quite a few statements. African leaders also have kind of engaged him in what is a very interesting moment. So, uh, what do you make of the significance of this visit at this point of time, especially considering there was a lot of talk about grain. We saw that African leaders had gone to Russia, talked to Putin, for instance. So, how do we analyze this visit? You see, there is no question that the success that the United States and European Union countries had thought they had gained in the United Nations when the U Ukraine, uh, the war was condemned, Russia was condemned, by a set of countries, including some of the African countries, like, for instance, Kenya. They felt that a certain section of the world was supporting them on the issue of Ukraine. But when it came to sanctions, it was clear that virtually nobody else, uh, apart from the European Union, and of course, we have Australia and New Zealand on the other side of the ocean, and the United States, the virtually nobody, and of course, not, uh, of course, in the North Canada as well. Right. Apart from that, nobody was really going with sanctions. So Africa's position was, some, for some of the countries, condemning uh, the Ukraine uh, war, what Russia had launched in the uh, military operations, as they call it, but at the same time, not engaging with the Western de decision yeah. to go ahead with sanctions. And as uh, at that time, President Biden had said, convert ruble to rubble. Now, that has failed. But what has happened is that the war has really had two major impacts. One we know and we have discussed, which is on energy, which has impacted European Union very badly. But of course, it also affects others. But the second is really on the food grains yeah. and fertilizers, because both are important for food. And both Belarus and Russia are major exporters of uh, fertilizers, as well as Ukraine and Russia for food. So that's why we saw the African leaders reaching out to Russia, because for both export out of Ukraine, out of Russia, as well as fertilizers, they needed Russia's help. So given that, this Lavrov's visit also makes it clear that Macron was bringing nothing to the table, while Lavrov clearly was. So Lavrov has much more traction, precisely because the food supplies which have been impacted, and they have been impacted as we discussed last time, that they have been impacted not just because Ukraine has mined its uh, harbor, uh, there's a blockade that Russia has imposed. They would like to check what ships go in and go out from. So that was both these issues, the sanctions on Russia, which made it difficult for them to send food outside uh, Russia. Right. So both these issues that Russia could play a role, but European Union has really no role at the moment. So Macron going to Francophone Africa, which is where, you know, the French strength is there, that, that is, does not carry too much weight. Because increasingly, even the French strength in Francophone Africa is eroding. And people are not willing to be uh, controlled by France. And the issue of the French controlling the monetary system in Francophone Africa, the currencies over there, all of that has come into question. And both the United States and French are in increasingly under pressure to withdraw militarily from some of the countries which are facing insurrection. And we see also the induction of the Wagner Group in Russia in some of these cases. Right. So there is a weakening of uh, France in Francophone Africa, their backyard, which now the United States is slowly taking over with its bases and so on. They have already been in a large part of Africa, as we know. There are also a number of lily pods, as they call it, movable bases. All of that is taking place. But on the issue of food and fertilizer, as well as the energy, there is the, the Russia is a player, and clearly France is not. Right. So therefore, France's old heft is no longer visible. And we can see Macron made a lot of noise 
very strong anti-Russia noises over there. But it doesn't seem to have drawn the traction that Lavrov has. And there is a much older history, of course, of Russia with Africa in the national liberation struggle, which, of course, was also against the French. So right. the, that part of it is very much there. So I think this is uh, Russia's role, therefore, as a supplier of essential commodities Africa needs, as well as its past history in Africa, unlike that of the colonial players. And now, of course, the United States also makes this difference, as you are talking about. Right. So, Prabir, again, moving a bit more to Macron's visit himself, you know, uh, he, this is a, comes at a time when France has faced quite a few setbacks. I mean, there have been uh, uprisings against the French, regular protests in a number of countries which were erstwhile French colonies and where France, France had actually placed troops, French troops were forced to withdraw back to Niger, for instance. But you also mentioned a key point, which is that the United States is also increasingly playing a role. We see that with Morocco at one point, but also AFRICOM, for instance, being established. So, how, how are the US and the French really working together in uh, this A region specifically? Well, there is obviously a clear partnership between the French and the United States as the French becomes more unpopular. After all, they are an ex-colonial power, still asserting their hegemony on the currency of a number of these countries. There are a bunch of uh, ex Franco, I mean, Francophone countries, originally of the French quote unquote overseas uh, uh, states or whatever right. they call them. So those are still under the hegemony of France because of the currency. Their currency is still controlled, their fiscal decisions are still controlled by France. And though they they have a so-called currency which three or four of them share, and there's another group which of countries which they share, that really it's under France's central bank. So given that, there is the resentment on both counts that they control our economy by virtue of controlling our uh, reserve bank. They don't have their own reserve bank in that sense. So fiscal policies are with France. And the second part of it is that the kind of junior partnership, which was what France had exercised over a period, that is slowly, there is a huge pushback on that. And the fact that initially the French military played a role in some of these uh, countries supporting the internal uh, military uh, forces over there, that seems to have had a huge pushback. So there are a lot of people who are very unhappy what the French army is doing and there's been pushback in uh, different uh, uh, countries where they have actually thrown the French out and invited the Wagner group in. So they still face insurgency from the Islamic fundamentalists the ISIS kind of offshoots which are there. But they also see that the, the French troops are not a help. In fact, French troops have become highly unpopular with the people because they see it also supporting the army uh, forces internally against the people. So it's not just against the uh, rebel groups. So at this alienation of France as an ex-colonial power and a weak colonial power at the moment, I think is increasing. You see, Great Britain or United Kingdom, as it called itself later, realized this much earlier. So they handed over the baton quite early to the, to the United States. But that was also because of English solidarity. The language they spoke was roughly similar. Therefore, the baton, picking up the baton was easier. But in Francophone Africa, France was much more jealous of preserving their, uh, shall we say, hegemony over these countries. But over a period of time, it's clear that France is no longer in a position to fulfill those requirements. And therefore, the United States has stepped in with AFRICOM, as you have said. The AFRICOM is still headquartered in Europe. But still, the fact is there is an AFRICOM a number of bases, as well as a number of this uh, mobile bases. So both of these sets are there. And they seem to be there in Morocco, as you have said. Also in Ghana, they seem to have set up right. a fairly strong establishment. Morocco, of course, as you know, uh, went to the extent of using Pegasus to also uh, look at the phones of uh, senior French government officials, including, I think, President Macron. So the Morocco is a bit, uh, in that sense, uh, much more at the moment with the United States mm -hmm. than even with France. Right. So I think given all of this, you can see a clear emergence of the United States being the uh, basic guarantor of a lot of the states. And Russia, with the current uh, changes that have taken place, the fact that Russian ruble has become stronger, the fact that Russia has primary commodities which the world needs, 
Given that, I think you are seeing a change of uh, relations, correlations between first the old Europe, the European Union, and the old colonial past. Are we also going to see a realignment of uh, forces in Africa between Russia, China, which is the major economic uh, power in Africa, and the United States. So are we going to see that? That is the important question that we have to follow in Africa, because the United States is a military power, but also a major economic and financial power. It's no longer a major financial power as it used to be in Africa, say, 20 years back. That has been really replaced by uh, China, right. where China is the major trading partner of a number of these countries in Africa. So given that, the uh, American influence is also not as much as it could have been 20 years back. So weakening of France, weakening of United States financially and economically in Africa, are we going to see a, a major realignment of politics in Africa? That's the question that we are uh, seeing emerge in Africa. And I think Macron's and Lavrov's visit and the response that both these leaders have got from African countries show clearly that European Union is on the way out. Russia and China are certainly more assertive in the global stage. The United States is a question mark to what extent they will be able to maintain their hegemony through financial and economic control, the control over economy. They still control the global financial system. So that we have to see, will that realignment take place there also? That's an important question because I think the dollar hegemony right. may be weakened, but it is still very much there. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Prabir. That's all we have time for today. We'll be covering more such issues in future episodes of Mapping Fault Lines. Until then, keep watching NewsClick.